please mute yourself for us. And please share the link with your friends. Invite somebody to come in and also be blessed by this program. Amen, amen, amen. Let's share a word of prayer before we begin. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and glory. We thank you. We honor you. We magnify your name for this time. We are grateful for the opportunity, Jehovah God, to learn of your ways and means to help us for our relationships to be stronger and better. Jehovah, tonight we commit the speaker into your hands. We are asking Holy Spirit that you will speak through him, use him to be a blessing unto us. That wherever we are struggling in our relationships, by your spirit, help us iron it out, Lord. That we will have good and better relationships. We thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We honor you and we magnify you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Tonight is about learning or having a discussion on the nuggets that will build a good relationship, things that we can do to enhance our relationship. I don't think everyone, any one person knows it all. I don't think anybody has all the answers. But I believe that as we learn, we're going to also share with others and help others also become good in their relationships. Tonight, we're going to ask you, we have sent a link round. If you have any questions you need to ask or you need Bishop to clarify something for you, kindly use the links that I have sent to you and ask your questions so that um, we can answer the questions for you. Um, sometimes when they send it through, it's okay to send it through my phone, but sometimes it disrupts me a little. So I'll, I'll kindly ask that you send it through the link so that we can answer your questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, whilst we wait for Bishop, I want to encourage you that whatever challenge it is that you're going through in a relationship, feel free to speak to someone about it. Sometimes we want to handle things our way. We want to do things our way so that nobody knows what is going on. But in the process, we mess things up a bit. So by the time you come or you seek for help, sometimes it's gotten to the point where it's a bit difficult or it's a bit late to address certain issues. So I'll admonish you that the moment you find out that things are not going right or things are not going the way you would expect them to go, that you seek help immediately. It will help you, it will make the relationship better and it will strengthen the relationship as well. Sometimes when there's too much mess in it, then it's difficult. You don't even know where to start from or how to deal with it. So I am encouraging you that if you find there's challenges in the relationship, please, please, please seek help. You can call a counselor, you can call a man of God and let them help you. It would help you. It will make the relationship better. Amen. I believe our bishop is right with us. Our bishop is on with us. So we're going to kick it off. Where's my bishop? Yeah, he's here. Amen. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Welcome, bishop. Welcome, welcome. The internet video. giving us a challenge. Let's, let's use this. Okay. Start your okay. video. Okay, the video is, is disturbing a little bit. Uh, my video yeah. seems a bit dark. That's okay, we can still see you. We can mm -hmm. still see you, we're good to go. 
So thank you so much for joining us. And um, happy new year to everyone. Happy new year. Please share the link. Invite somebody to join us tonight as we learn on nuggets to enhance our relationships. Tonight, once again, we have a bishop with us, Bishop Cornelius Ajakofi, our facilitator for tonight, our advisor, our counselor for tonight. He is going to speak to us, encourage us, and show us ways to enhance our relationships. This man is a, a colleague, member of Victory Bible Church International. He's a, a businessman, an entrepreneur, a book writer, a counselor. I call him the father of love because he can we can go all the angles. Amen. And um, we are privileged to have him speaking to us tonight, teaching us and helping us through our relationship challenges. So Bishop, you're welcome to tonight's session. And as you know, we're talking tonight about nuggets to enhance our relationship. Um, we know that in, my, in relationship, there are challenges. Sometimes when you start the relationship, you can see the challenges straight away. Sometimes you don't see the challenges until you're way into the relationship. And sometimes because we don't know what to do or how to handle it, we find ourselves in so many challenges and we don't know exactly what to do. So tonight we're trusting that God by his spirit will help you help us in ways that we can enhance the relationship so that we're not dragging it so much into the mud before we're trying to find help. And so we welcome you, Bishop, and we'll, I'll leave the floor to you right now and I'll join you back again. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you, Lady Reverend. It's a pleasure. And as usual, I will also say Happy New Year because this is our first meeting. I'm yeah. excited to meet all of you on, on this medium. And I'm trusting God that together we will all learn. I'm learning from, from you. Your various questions you bring across is a learning point for me mm. and enhance it, my preparation all the time mm. towards what you do. Mm. And I'm trusting that today will not be an exception. We want to see what God can do. Damn it. Okay. Are we good to go? Yes. What, somebody is close to you giving us feedback, Bishop. Yeah, it's better yes. now. It's we better. were changing the... the, the yeah. Are it's you good. okay now? Yes, yes. It's good. Yes, it's good. Okay. So let's... let's we're looking at nuggets. Mm. And like uh, we had a discussion before, Lady Rev, I said this thing, will, at least we'll use today to do a preview of our, our relationship. Mm. We are going to talk about it bits here and there. Nuggets are snapshots of our love relationships here and there. And then when we enter into the questions, it will take us to other aspects that I might not immediately touch. But when you're looking at how we can enrich our nuggets that can help us enrich our relationship, our first look at when we are really in love, what one should expect? What are the signposts you should expect? I'll give that nugget. Then look at when people are happily married, what are the things that need to be there? Mm -hmm. Then the various, when the man is, is in the love, what about So I'll look at it from various angles. Then we can look at, at our relationships very well. We are not only talking about people that are married, but we are talking about people who are looking for love. We are mm. talking about people who are trying to get into marriage. So there mm. are different kinds of people listening. There are singles, they are married. There are people that are near married, everybody. So I'm going to see. So I try to pick topics that will help us generally. Mm. So today I, was, I will start with when a person really loves you, what you do expect. When yeah. the person really loves you, mm. what should you look out for? 
what are some of the things that will know that this person really loves me? Because there are people that they are in relationship and they can't even ask themselves, how are you? They can't even say, I'm checking up on you and all mm. this. And yet they say they are in relationship and they've counted the years. They can tell you the number of years. And these are small nuggets or tidbits which they don't see. So mm. I, 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 I put something down, I said that uh, uh, how, uh, somebody cannot ask you, how is your day? And they genuinely meant asking you, how is your day? And really interested in the answer you give them. The moment they are asking you, how is your day? Then it means that they have suspected you in a certain way and they are expecting you to be able to say something that they are looking for. But not that they genuinely are interested. So watch out for somebody who says he loves you, man, husband, wife, whatever, then he cannot genuinely ask, how did your day go? And really interested to know. And it's a set time for you to look at. The other thing too is that, how does it go when maybe you are hurting? Is the person also hurting along with you? Or would the person just throw you off? That is also another uh, uh, thing you can look at. Anytime something happens to you, look at the person's body language, look at the person's words. Is it really, it does he or she really means what she's saying or she's laughing behind the scenes and saying that it is good that you go through such a thing. So when the person is hurting, you are also hurting. That is somebody who is really in love. The, the, another point is that the person will care about your happiness and well-being. What is happening around you? How is it? Have you eaten? Little, little things. Mm. It is not buying a car. It is not building a house. How, how are you? How is your well-being? What is happening around? The person should be able to ask and consider your feelings when mm. making decisions. Anytime the person is making decisions, is asking, how will it turn out for the one that I love? Or I'm taking it myself. These are things that at times doesn't help us put marriage or relationship in its right perspective. Yeah. I want to do this and mm. it is me. It's I want me. to go in there and it is me. I want mm. to be happy this way and it is me. So when it happens that way, that person is not really in love. And yeah. you could say that, oh, we are caught up already in marriage. We'll come to learn how to spice it and bring it back if these things are not there. Okay. Yeah. But those of you who have not entered into marital relationships, watch out for some of these things. Is the person genuinely finding out that, look, what is happening to you? Maybe you are going to school. Is the person really interested in your studies? Maybe you are doing a course. Is he really interested? What is your direction? So the, when you are able to know that ah, this person is mindful about my feeling, is mindful about what is happening around me, mindful about what I do, then you know that mm, there is a genuine love or there is a sincere love that comes. You can also know there's this, what we call the therapy of listening. Mm. And therapy of listening. Does the person listen when you are talking? Yeah. Does the person pay attention? <coughs> that is another attention. Yeah. You might be talking and it's not paying attention. So I said they listen to what's bothering you and try to be supportive and helpful. If you are in a, a relationship with somebody and the mm. person cares about you and the person is really in love with you, Genuinely, they will want to listen and they want to see what is bothering you and they want to be supportive. How can I help? Mm. How can I help? Or in what way can I make it less uh, burdensome for you? Because the person should be able to carry your burden. Yeah. So that is another aspect. We are just talking about how to identify 
somebody who loves you. That's it. Um, when I was, as a young man, as a young man, when I was in the uni, I was in a relationship with a lady. Um, and she comes to me in school. At that time, we normally get allowances as university students. She comes to me in school and I cook and she eats and then she will go back. So one day I ask her, when you are coming all the way Wait. from Accra, when well, those of you don't know uh, Accra very well, there's a place called Legon. So coming all the way from Accra to Legon, are you saying there's nothing on the way you could mm. pick to at mm. least show your love that this young man is a student, he cooks for me, he does this, this for me. And the next visit, she bought one boiled egg, not two. So one boiled, meanwhile, at that time, she was working. She was a teacher, she was working. She bought one boiled egg. And that is what she brought to the school. So I asked myself, are we going to share? Is she going to give it to me? So these things, it's not about emotions. You mm. will know whether the person is interested in you or not. The signs are so much written on the mm. wall. But at mm. times with emotions, you cannot handle it. You feel, oh, the person will change. Nobody no. changes. One of the no. of relationship. No. Nobody changes in the relationship. The mm -hmm. person, the way the person is, so are you going to see it? Yeah. Another one, they never want to risk in any situation for you. Mm. Yes, there will be a situation you are expecting the person to risk and they will never. Little risk, they may not take it. And yeah. such people if the person is really in love, mm. then the person cannot stand losing you in any way. Okay, the one who doesn't love you will not take risk, but the one who also really loves you will not take the risk of losing you. Yeah. So whatever situation, he wants to hold it. He wants to hold it. And somebody who is really in love will always want to know what is happening in your life. What is the best way I can do to make sure that something really goes right? So it means that there is this problem that you have to look out for. Everybody in a relationship, look out for these things. Is the person waiting on me? Is, 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 the, is the person interested in me? If he's interested in me, what is he showing? Showing. What is he showing? Yeah. So, some of these things, assuming you don't know and mm. you want to bring it back, this can work for couples, this can work for relationships that are not really going well. You want to schedule what we call weekly date night. Every week you specifically want to, to find out because if the person genuinely wants it, then the person will come. There are people, they will go, ah, then they will come. They will leave you, then they come. So at any time when things are trying to turn for you, then they come back to your life again. And now they will express and tickle your love and you are the one I love. When yeah. you are going to tick small, then they leave you. They leave you. So try and prepare what we call weekly dates. Let's meet today. Let's go out and see whether the person might put a spanner in your wheel. Oh, I have an engagement here. And at time, watch out. Such people will not tell you Immediately, you are discussing the date. He will wait the last minute. It's last minute, yeah. Last minute. Yeah. Then when you have dressed and everything, they will the call in and tell you, oh, I have to vary the time, I have to vary the date. Something has come. It's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah. Because the person who respects you, because the person who really loves you should respect you, should respect your timing, should be able to know your space, Ah, wow, wow. because the person should respect your, respect your space. Mm. So if he doesn't, because if you have said, maybe you've cleared some things and you made the time that we will go out, then all of a sudden it comes to throw you off. Let it be a red flag and watch out for the next, next visit. So don't please, when it comes to this, I tell people, 
Emotions are good for love. But at the same time, use your head. Use your head. Don't just go in flat. Then also try to eating together, having a dinner together. Eating itself is spiritual. Mm. Eating itself is spiritual. So can we go out for a bite? It's not to something that is expensive. It is simply to make time for you to eat. You know that at times, the person's habit of chewing can even put you off. So if, if you are with a person, you try to adjust to all these things before. Yes. Other than that, when you get married, you don't yeah. even want to eat together when you are expected to eat together. So you try to use some of these things to bring yeah. back what is lacking, okay? And try to complement each other. Maybe a call. Don't stay a day. If the person can stay a day without putting a call to you or without hearing from you, then that person is not a good flat. No matter what we, we, we use the word flat, people think to the negative. negative. But a flat is somebody who will always keep you in the picture. He will always make sure he's calling your attention yeah. to him or herself. He's flirting with you. Okay, so let's watch out for that thing. That is another thing. Whether mm -hmm. the person compliments you per day, you call, he calls, you send a message, he returns. Or you send a message in the morning, then you return it in the evening. Then they will tell you, I am busy. What kind of busy it is? Do you get me? These yeah. things, don't take it for granted. Mm. It will give you sleepless nights. It will mm. give you weepings. Mm. That will wet your pillow. Mm. And yet when it comes, it will be like as if nothing has nothing. happened. Yeah. Because he wants to get your attention, get what he wants to get, and go away. Mm -hmm. I did say in the relationship when I was a young man, I'm talking over 45 years, eh? because I was young by right then, wow. and I married for almost 35 years. And that time, doing jolly jolly, you get me, <laughs> beloved doses. <laughs> that would be over 40 years, yes. And so the person couldn't buy me anything. And it's not like but I, I think it should be thoughtful. So one of the things that you should do to bring back yourself is that, look, buy yourself little, little gifts. Little, little. Little, little. I did not say expensive gifts. No, no. Some of you start well, and all your love language and body language is to buy expensive things. No. It is not necessary. Buy little things. Okay, somebody can... The other time we were, we were just having a joke. Uh, the first uh, uh, salary I earned, and I want to tell my wife I love her, I want to marry her, and I'm preparing for the marriage, was to take her to a snack bar and bought a milkshake and meat pie. That was all. And I've received my first salary as a young man. I quite remember eh, February ending 1986 is when I received my first salary, 86. Oh. I get out of my office, went to the bank, cash the money, went to a school. At that time, she was schooling at Accra Polytechnic, which is now uh, uh, Accra University. I went there, called her out, went to sit somewhere and have a, a, a meat pie and a drink. It's <laughs> not the value of the thing. It's the little, little. The when little, you have the meat, the, the little, little, you mm. can do for the person and mm. an handkerchief. Okay, maybe uh, when you see that you go around the person, uh, you see pen a lot, a pen. You come in, you put a, a set of pen, maybe steady. There are little things you will do. Yeah. And that shows that you are in love with the person. It's thoughtful gifts. Mm. Then 
try and do once a while what I say a cook in. Okay, you're going to marry somebody. One day try to drop a cooking for the person. Oh, come up. And when the person comes, you've done a little cooking. What are you depicting? I am a good cook. I am a companion that can help. It could be a man. It could be a lady. I used to have what I call uh, uh, curry rice. And I do corn beef stew. Okay, as a young man, <laughs> when my wife passes around, hey, Charlie. And so me too, by the time I come home and she's done the catering stuff, she will leave them and I'll come and eat it. So most of it, my dinner, I take it from my house. Not because of lunch, because I did not have food to eat. <laughs> and it was the one who gave me that support within that time. And I don't joke with those things at all. No. He gave me a lot of support because he knows that this guy is somebody who hasn't got it. But me too, oh. my little, my little I have, I share with her to let her know that, yes, this is me and this is what I can do. And I'm saying that out of all this, treat yourself with little messages. Don't stay. You are busy, yes. Quickly, I'm busy. I'll call you any moment. That's all. How long will it take you to type busy? I'll get back. These days, the phones too are sad that uh, they, they, there is already preloaded uh, return messages. I can't talk now. I'll call you back. Then you follow it up and call the person. But the person will call. There will be missed uh, calls. You are not going to say anything until you meet the person and you want to explain yourself that you no message, nothing. I don't think it is right. Those of us who are in marriage, we shouldn't leave sex. Those of us married couples on the line, we shouldn't mix sex, no matter how challenging the moments are, we shouldn't miss sex. Then we should try and take romantic trips regularly. What is romantic trips? Romantic trips are not sex. I predetermined times to go to a place both of you can enjoy yourself. Both of you can have tita tits. You can have chats among yourself. That is what we're talking about. You need time set aside. Talk about from archaeology to zoology. You know, normally, when you have time that you are spending with yourself, then you can chat. You chat a little politics, a little football, a little sports, maybe other sports you are interested this one chipping, this one chipping, this one. It broadens your relationship uh, a scope that you are not just coming and straight away, it is about emotions to go to bed. No, it broadens your scope. So that yeah. is also something you should look at. And that I'm so much interested in these romantic trips. It could yeah. be even a stroll outside your home where you are aunt holding aunt. I yes. don't know. I don't know. But when we start this thing, we easily can put our hands around our neck. We easily can hold that. Yes. But as the thing develops a little bit, then it becomes an alien situation. Mm. We Mercy. can't even hold our hands. We Mercy. can't even stand and talk. And I ask myself, why you can do that when you do romantic trip? Let's go. We, don't, we are not going anywhere. I am a part of a crowd called Makati. You just make a trip to a brie, go and sit down there, buy some kebabs. I mean, you in London, and I mean, walk out of your place, go to a park, stroll, or go outside London, go outside your barrow. Go, I mean, these things are done. Yeah. You plan, yeah. you plan. And it's, you see, when you are going to do it with your person, it becomes special. It's not a group. Normally we plan in a group. Please, those things doesn't show. Oh, I'm going with you to you to add on. No, go special. Then you are forced to communicate. Because there's no other person you can talk to. There's no friend there. So what do you do? So let's look out for some of these things. Let's look out for some of these things. Then I say, visit the place where you had your first 
a meeting once a while, visit your place. Well, we used to have a certain card that we set up late night. And maybe I've shared with you before. Late night, we call him awake. Awake, awake, we say, you wait. We'll be chatting by the roadside. He knows that we are so glued to ourselves that we can't separate. He said, wait, my last trip, I'll pick you up. So anytime we get to Abeno, we do. Then one day, I came to London just like uh, this thing. Then when I landed, my wife had come to pick me from the airport. Then we saw him as a, 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 a cabby pickup person at the airport. Then we called, then we introduced ourselves. They said, hey, so he's spoken three language. Who to me worry? Hey, you are now oh. married. Do you get it? <laughs> it was beautiful. We went, when we saw, we waited, we said, awake. This is, you remember Aveno Johnson, this young man, this girl who you picked to Apenqua? Say, yeah. Then we said, this. Do you get Visit some of these things. So anytime I'm talking, it's a nostalgic memory for me. It makes yeah. me feel good that mm -hmm. these are times that would, I would never visit in my life again. Yeah. And I visit it in terms of memory. So those of you who are not ma married, this is how you can replay some of the things. And if you are even married, this is the way you can replay. Because you cannot have it, but you can replay. Replay. It, it might yeah. not be life. It might be replay. So mm. once I want replay some of the good times you've had, talk about some of the good times you had, and it will help you. Today, I became a little bit emotional in church. I was telling them, this is a woman I got married to, I had no room, I had nothing, and yet she trusted me. I was just talking about Jesus Christ when he was in the boat and there was storm. And I was saying that his disciples had been with him. The same apostles had been with him. But they asked Jesus a question. Are you sleeping and you don't care about us drowning? Don't they know Jesus is God? They know. But it gets to a time. Eh? Husband or wife or people in relationship who ask themselves, you, you don't know me. You don't know me. And, and maybe he might have exhibited a certain thing. Or maybe they are talking to you. I know you go left. He said, oh, you don't know me. This, this part of me, you don't know me. And I asked myself, how come that people will be moving and going on, and yet we won't know ourselves? That is another, another thing we should look at. Let's be unfolding our lives. As we move, as people that are in love, let's unfold our lives. And so always go back to your proposal, where you propose, they respond, what the, I mean, can you imagine the first time that the person told you, I love you? It was like you went cloud nine. Now you can't feel it. So go back, go back. If, you, if possible, go to the spot. If you are not married or you are married, go to the spot and re -arch. Mm -hmm. You can re what happened. Okay. You can talk about it. You can, are you getting it? And yeah. that leads me to having fun. Relationship is fun. It is not force. It is not every relationship that is marriage. And I want to say something here, especially for the ladies. The young men have realized that the ladies want marriage. Yeah. So they will come and talk about marriage first, and yet they don't mean it. They don't mean it. Because yes. they know when they talk about marriage, they will mm. get your attention. And then mm. when they get it, they will travel with you, mess you up financially, mess you up physically, mess you up emotionally, mess you up. Please, as we are talking today, be making up your mind. Look out for some of the things. The person is not really interested in your life. Your mm. life is like an atima for the person. So I am saying, try and watch out and don't give in to anything, don't be uh, taken aback by whatever the person is doing. Don't let the person, uh, uh, what, what do I call it? Uh, capture your mind, mm. imprison you, so that you are afraid when you leave him, you leave her, you won't get anybody again. I think that's the way they play. Age yeah. is against you, therefore mm. I've spent two years, I've spent three years, four years, five years, when I leave, who is going to come again? It's better you take that decision. This is one of the major 
major wisdom of marriage. Better you take a decision now than to enter. Then when it comes to challenging those of us who are married and you realize that you've got to a point of your life, you cannot hold it again. Life is at stake. Please, you are not the first person that will divorce today and tomorrow. Divorce is not good. I don't subscribe to it. But when it gets to that point and you have to take the decision, please don't hesitate. Especially when your life is at stake, diseases, sicknesses, worries all over. When you die today, the person will remarry. Mm -hmm. So what have you done? So we, we need, I, I was telling my wife that some of these areas of the church, we need to relook, we need to look at it again. As much as we say it, that it shouldn't happen, we shouldn't look at it from a way that even when the person is suffering, we are letting the person take it anyway, anyhow. There are some other things we can do most every day once we meet. Those of us who are married, so you pick those areas you can do when you are married. Come and pass around and slap the bones of your, your wife, your husband. Are you getting <laughs> it? I slap the bones. I was I hold it a little bit and pump it. Pump it, pump it like a, 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 a cascala. We call it pump it, pump it, cascala. You, you just say, oh, what are you doing? It, it's fun. You create it, you hold it. Uh, 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 or maybe the person is not aware, you hold the head and kiss the cheek. I mean, things that make the person feel a little bit special. Okay, put your hand around. Like I told you, initially we can hold our hands as we are going. I don't know what happens, whether they be witches or not. People that can hold their hand, they can now hold us. But put your hand on, you see, the moment you put your hand around someone, on the neck, on the waist, the person feel assured. Okay, you are holding the person. You say you have you have not spoken in words, but you have mm. said you are mine. Mm. You are mine. The person mm. feel accepted within mm. your distance. So mm. those are the old hands. Play what I call uh, uh, um, around. Uh, 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 what is this thing? Uh, 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 this cat and mouse play. Uh, there's, there's a popular thing. Tom and Jerry. Uh, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. Do you get me? I mean, relationships should be fun. It should be fun. It should be fun. It should be fun. <laughs> Yesterday, I went to take a bra and wore it. Then she died. my second girl said, oh, daddy, this is my bra. Then I started walking and said, oh, as for you, when they even created you, a woman, it won't fit you. I said, why? But I, I give birth to all of you, and you are, are you getting me? Create fun. Their the home, their relationship should be fun. Mm. Should it be always up, try tight and what have you? It should be fun. Huh? Try and rub back. You know, I was telling somebody, uh, just had a counseling session today. I said, I can't accept the fact that Africans cannot exhibit a little love. You travel, those of you in UK, those of you in the diaspora, US, wherever you are, you see old people and the husband or the wife will be rubbing the back. Yeah, when we are walking, this one is in front, this one is at the back. What? Who has bewitched us? The Galatians. Who <laughs> us? Are we now in the, in the flesh? Who has bewitched us? Oh, we mercy. can't even mercy. let the wine grow, a wine that is grown and that is fermented is vintage. So when your love grows, it mm. gives you an opportunity to be mm. flexible. Mm. Okay, flexible. That is relationship, not endearing it. It is relationship, enjoy it, enjoy mm. it. So rub the back, give him a hug. Or her, her heart. Okay. You see, when you are open minded, when you are not thinking evil, you easily can embrace somebody, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, how are you? How I miss you. But when you are moving with the person, 
you can't embrace. Right. What is that that comes in between and tell you that you are sinning? What is it? You can embrace everybody, but not your person. beloved. That's it. And your beloved is sitting back or standing back and seeing you do all these things. And yet you don't expect your beloved to complain. Because when he complains, you are too possessive. Mm. No, it's not possessive. And when I'm blessing people in marriage, I tell them there's a line we use. She owns and command your love. It's a line in the uh, this involves that we say she owns and your love. So I tell the men, every woman should own and command them because Bible say, husband, love your wives. So whether if you are moving man, get to know that your position is to love. Mm. And the way you are moving with own stack love is for her. So why should you allow somebody to come and share it? So mm. you can just hug everybody and you can't hug her. Okay? You can right. only hug her when you are uh, uh, out Intimate. of the sight of people. No, 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 no. Let it be. Just hug her, kiss her forehead, kiss her neck. Do I mean, these things, who said you, are, you have seen if you see somebody and kiss her forehead? No. If you kiss the cheek, who said you have seen? Okay, if you kiss the neck, who said you have seen? I, this is not sinful. This yeah. is a show of affection. Yeah. Men in some other cultures, men can even meet and be kissing their forehead. Even some even meet with their lips. And it is absolutely nothing. But it has no intimacy in that sense. It is a show of affection. So anytime we are having a relationship, there should be show of affection everywhere. Okay, so at times too, maybe the person might be standing. It's interesting. Either you ask the person from behind or like they put their hand and then you try to twist your voice a little bit. Then the person might be guessing. <laughs> guessing. I mean, it's fun. Look at me. I am. I. You've made me go into my mode of a young man <laughs> trying to move my life. Wow. And, and and you have opportunity to do that, and you are not doing it. Mercy. You are not doing it. Mercy. Mercy. At times like this, just like this, rubbing the the, um, the, back, of the, the back of the hand, of the, the hand. I mean. Basic things, basic yeah. things, okay? Basic things. And so times you can, there, there are things people do which I don't really uh, 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 enjoy where people are sitting, yeah, you can try it. Under the table, you use your leg to be just doing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Your leg and your leg, go, and you are rough, you are going using your leg up and down rubbing her legs and making her feel good. If the person is your this thing, know that you go flirting with other people and you are doing that, please. So that's why I'm a bit conscious in, in showing that. Uh, so there is something that I, 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 I wrote here. Rest your head on the shoulder. Rest your head on my shoulder. Okay. Your head is just lying there. They should be trying to sing. And it's not nice. you are sitting down and you are just off there like that. When you, these things are easily done, when easily those done. initial easily done, but I am talking about bringing it back. Mm. Bringing it back. So mm. All of us should learn how to bring it back into our relationship. Amen. For me, for me, it is something that I cannot stop doing, whether in church, whether ah, you want to whisper to the ears of your wife, you want to whisper to the ears of your husband, then you are in church, so some, my, the husband will be sitting somewhere, the wife will be sitting somewhere. I disagree totally. Mm -hmm. No matter your functions, try to be together, try to be communicating. The preacher man might say something and you want them to confess. Oh, did you listen to this? 
Oh, did you get it? This yeah. one. And you make little, little comments. Why are in church? You don't behave like we are, we are in church. Uh, I am minding my business. You do mind your business. Are you building life together? I feel you should build your life together. Amen. Give yourself, if those of us married, massaging, scalping, eh? when you put your hand into the person's hair and you are going through, these days, we don't get the natural hair. No. We have that here ones. That's what you did. But when you put your hand into the natural one, it has a, a, a sensitive feel, okay, which when the person is off the week or something, you try to do it. And he also tries to do it. There are various things we can all learn how to do. I want to be closing up with some few things, then we can be asking questions. How do I identify a happy couple? Mm. So when you look at the positive as we're going to look, which is another, then you can look at the negative. When people are in relationship and they are happy, what are some of the things you should be able to see with them? Sad people make time for one another. They make time. No matter what it is, they make time. Then you so when you say, oh, we are going somewhere, oh, no. no, my wife, my wife had to finish. My husband has gone somewhere, I'm waiting. They always make time for themselves. They are able to tell themselves good night, good morning. They, these things are simple. Whether okay. you are with the person in the house or you stay somewhere. Anytime I travel, those of you who know my wife who get in touch with before I sleep, I'll talk to her. In the early morning, by 5.36, I'm calling her. Good morning. How is it? How is the house? And so whilst I am with her, uh, good night, I'm going to bed. Good morning. When I wake up from my bed, good morning. Only how are you doing? Fine. When she wakes up, only how are you going? I go to my the girls who are in the house. Good morning. What will it? I mean, you are establishing a relationship, a happy union. So these are things you can easily do. You see, one major thing that has embossed us that at times becomes a problem is communication. 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 Mm. Communication is the foundation for every relationship. Communication is not talking. Communication is various. Body language, speech, non-verbal, non-verbal, communication. Mm. So yeah. I say that they communicate their feelings. Today, I am not happy. The way you lifted up your voice, I don't like it. I am sorry. Oh, okay, I didn't realize my voice was up. Oh, when I was talking, you walk out on me. Oh, no, that was in my mind. Okay, mm. communicate your feelings. Mm. Maybe your mind is jumbling and you are going. When I was talking, you were not paying attention. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had finished. That's why I walked away. You, get, you see, these things make marriage. When you see people behaving that way, you will know that this is a happy Married, they give each other space. The fact that you are in love doesn't mean wherever the person is, you are there. No, the person yes. needs to develop space. The person the has, talent, he has his gifts, mm. not necessarily you are doing the same thing. You will see people if the man knows how to sing, the woman will force to sing. If the woman knows how to sing, the man will force. I mean. <laughs> We are, we are all giving different talents. Mm, mm. And but give the person space to develop. <laughs> okay. Don't be choking everything. And you see mom and woman, girlfriend, boyfriend, they are going, wherever the boy says, is going to do a program. And the girl too says, I, I counsel some people. The guy is a, a, a doctor. 
lecturing at KNUST. Mm. When he met the lady, he wanted to, the lady said he wants to do the masters. The guy agreed that you did your masters. She did two masters. Then he said, because the guy is a doctor, she also wants to do a doctorate, PhD. Ah, and the guy said, when we marry, you can still do your PhD. This lady said, no. She has to do a PhD before they will marry. Then is, she stepped back. Then she said, uh, other than that, they, she would need a certain amount of money. The guy said, how much is the money? Then said, so, oh, I don't want to mention. Then said, um, I need about 15,000 Ghana CD ring. Can you afford? In, 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 in England, it should be about 1,000, 2,300 pounds. Then that, and it's a lot of money in this part of the world. It gets, it uh, it we're is. talking about $1,000. It's a, quite a lot. She said she wanted such a way. The man said, why that particular way? So that is what he said. The man said, okay, I'll buy for you. Then he said, look, now when we, 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 everywhere we go, you come to pick me, you don't get up from the stairing to come and open the door for oh. me to get down. Oh. I mean, are you sure this is somebody? I'm talking about, this is somebody who has told the lady, I want to marry you. And these were the conditions, one after mm. the other, one after the other. Mm. Eventually the man left and went to marry. The lady is still single as of today. Mm. Why should they be so? Yeah. Maybe I'm talking about natural. Maybe it could be unnatural. That one, I leave it. We are not talking about that. But naturally, how can you be such unreasonable? How? So please, we look, let us laugh together. Mm. Ah, let us laugh together. Give ourselves space. Let us laugh together. It shouldn't be serious hey. because I spoke about fun. It should be serious, serious, serious. Eh? We only talk about money. We only talk about mortgage. We only talk about ah, why? That's all that you talk about. You don't sit down to talk and watch film and laugh and put, hey, look at it. I mean, would you, I mean, have fun of yourselves? And people that are really, really, really having a joyful marriage or relationship, they watch their back. They watch their back. The man watches the back of the woman. The woman watches the back of the man. How, yeah. Let me explain it further. Uh, let's say you go into your family. My wife comes into my family and my sibling or other people are speaking ill about it. I go to a defense. I wouldn't even allow them. The same way. So even if you meet your friends and they are talking evil about your partner, your special person, your own person, do you allow them? Then if you do that, you are not. So you see people uh, when, when we met his friends, his friends were making fun of me and he stood there and he said, ah, what, what should I do? I mean, when they watch, no, 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 no. The person is not watching your back. If there are few things that has to be said, you don't give the person out in public. You will solve it and come home to look at it, to look at it. Then please, people that are joyful, they listen. I've mentioned the listening. So these things are, they don't compare their relationship with others. Yeah. One of the major things I've realized, comparing, oh, you know what this person has been doing for this person. Especially those of you who are not in relation, if you are not in marriage, don't allow your friends to speak here about your partner. Oh, I saw her here, I saw her there, to you. And you think they are helping you. They are pushing you away. And you mm -hmm. see them fixed in there. Yeah. So don't yeah. allow them. Okay. And don't allow them to do comparison. You know what was done to this person. You, you have full city around this guy. You have full city around this lady. And do get me. That comparison. Yeah. They yeah. might not have anything. But they will, they will talk and make you feel very, very bad. And mm. I am saying that. 
these are some of the little things we can avoid. Eh? Let's check ourselves throughout the day. Let's check ourselves throughout the day, know what we are doing, know what is happening, and let's see what God can do for us. I want to stop here as we ask ourselves questions. Normally, I do this teaser. Then we look at the various aspects, Lady Reverend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bishop. Oh, this is wonderful. It's, it's, it's been um, an eye-opener for me on so many of the discussions that we have. Bishop, I want us to look at certain areas um, in um, discuss, talking about nuggets that would sustain the relationship. I was going to talk about communication, but you, you mm. um, threw a bit of light on it. I still want to ask questions about that because... Mm. Sometimes yeah. um, in relationship, we find that people talk at each other, but not to each mm -hmm. other. And they really don't communicate mm -hmm. anything. They just say what they want to say and walk away thinking, but I told you. Is that communication? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we say things and we don't express or really explain what we mean. But then we expect this, the partner or the spouse to understand what we're talking about. So how do we learn the act of communication? Because I find it challenging when somebody just talks at you and walks away and expects you to understand. Thank you, Lady Webb. Communication is never complete until it is received with the same expected meeting as it should be. Mm. So when you are transmitting an information, mm. when you are making sure you let the person know what you meant, mm. if the person don't get it in the right sense, you have not communicated. So communicated is wholly completed when the person gets the right understanding. You understanding. Want the so please, everybody get it that way. So you, you know that in talking, I mentioned a lot of listening, 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 listening. The listening goes with com communication. Okay. There are so many of the things that go with communication. It, it goes talking with each other is communication. Uh, 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 fighting fair is communication. Uh, things that some of the things I saw on the, they are all in the area of communication because mm. look who throws the first blow why did he throw the blow what mm. is the meaning of it I'm mm. just using, I'm not talking about physical blow but what started the argument right. yeah was it just talking at each other or you meant something and the person didn't get it and you were also not patient to let the person get it. So you are sure. shouting at each other, barking at each other, and yet at the end You're of the day, you barking, the person doesn't even know why you are barking. You know, at that, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are situations you see shouting going on, shouting, you keep quiet a little bit, and you feel you are being defeated by the person shouting, shouting, shouting. So you also want to shout. Uh -huh. Because is it because I am quiet? That's why you are shouting. So you also yeah. want so at the end of the day, is and you have both of you have not done anything. So communication is taking your time. I am using an iPhone. I'm talking about iPhone. Which type of iPhone? Be specific. Be specific. Let, because iPhone are different dimensions. Mm. Which type of iPhone? What? What the hell are we talking about here? Mm. So do, don't just say, I spoke about iPhone. And then you expected the person to know the type of iPhone you are talking about, the model of iPhone. And mm. the person get it. And the person brings you an iPhone and say, ah, but this one is an old version. Did you explain yourself? Did you? You did it. Mm. You did it. So for me, my mind of iPhone is what I brought you. So most people communicate in that manner, in that manner. They speak, they don't wait for a response, they move on, 
They don't know whether the person has heard it or not. They move on and they are expecting that sort of meaning they have in their mind, not considering the other person. Mm. So that's why when I started, I said uh, communication is a key foundation to everything in relationship. Communication, when you get to sex, communication. When you get to job, com- everything in relationship is, is based on communication. That's why I said when I saw a lot of your tidbits that uh, decorated the flyer, it's uh, most of them borders on communication. So yeah. how do we do that? Uh, yeah. Okay. And most of us communicate from our cultural base, our cultural background. Yeah. 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 But when we come together, we should learn a new culture because the person you are moving with is not the same as you. So how do I get the person to get understanding of my way of life? Because Hmm. culture is a way of life. Life. So how does the person get me? Okay. When we are to cook rice. Somebody will put the water and before putting, the water will boil and put the rice inside. Somebody will put the cold water and the rice on the, on the thing at the same time for it to boil. Both in the, in the uh, what, uh, what do you call it now? The thing you use in cooking rice. You see, my kitchen skills are like a rice cooker. Rice cooker. Okay. Somebody would like to let the water be a little bit before they put it. So everybody has a way and everybody thinks it's right. So when you come together, how have you communicated such that you shift from your culture, I shift from my culture. So that when we say, okay, let me tell you, let me say this this way. When you say petrol, Mm. petrol, I can understand petrol as a culture of Ghanaians. Of Ghana. Maybe UK, you also call it petrol. But when you go to US, they call it gas. Meanwhile, when we say gas, we are talking about liquid uh, petroleum. That is the, the cooking. Cooking. Yeah. So you might be talking gas. Mm-hmm. And I'm also thinking, uh, uh, you are saying we, we, we are short of gas to cook. And I will yeah. go and take the gas bottle and go and buy gas. Meanwhile, you are telling me there's no fuel in the, petrol in the car. You see, so you, you might have said something from your cultural base and I'm yes. okay. So yes. communication, let it be understood as it was intended. Mm. 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 Okay, Bishop, thank you. And I have another question about communication. You talk to a lot of people and from my understanding, it looks like some men have the notion that if you're in a relationship with a woman and you tell the woman everything, it means they're controlling you. Or you shouldn't tell, the wife shouldn't know everywhere you go, anywhere you go, or communicate everything to your wife. It means there's something wrong. How do you see that? Because if you're in a relationship or if you're married, then everything should be transparent. And that brings me yeah. to honesty and transparency. If you're mm. honest and you're transparent, that puts your partner, partner's mind at rest. Mm. But in our culture, in African culture, we think that a man should not tell the wife everything. So if I'm going out with my friend, should I tell you where I'm going, if I'm doing? But that puts the woman's mind to rest. What is your, mm. uh, your take on that? Because I find that most women have issues with that. Exactly. But I don't see anything. Exactly. I say that women are wells of treasure of everything that is beautiful. Mm-hmm. You can only get it when you communicate very well with them. In communication, you understand their feeling, you understand their way of thinking, you mm-hmm. under- because times you think maybe you are being smart, 
and we, we think the woman is dog. She's not dog. Do you get me? So at times we feel when we, I tell her everything, she will control me. She will control you in what sense? For me, what love is this is me. Accept me. These are my faults. These are accept me. So why would woman control you if where you are going, you sincerely are going there? Why would a woman do something if what you are saying is not lies? If she cross checks, it is the truth. So what is your problem? So for me, I can't. I said it. There are a lot of men who work for the banks to take it eventually. Because they think they have their life in their hands. They don't mm -hmm. tell their spouses where their monies are because that is what they use to control. Do you don't know anything? Then one day he can come up again. He don't even know his bankers and the bank takes the money. Do, is that what we like? Because to you, you are being a man by doing that. Now, if you are not married, and so this is to the married where you need to, uh, when you are not married, you draw it one okay. after little by little, little by, you know, at times when there's a deep well and you haven't got this long rope or snake to get the water, you get a little, then you come, you get a little, then you try to find a rope until you get, that is the way women are. All the nice things are down there. It takes time for you to be drawing them one after the other. And the key is communication. How do, okay, we have, we have uh, this thing to do. I am waiting for you. I am, uh, you call, you send a test. She sent back, she sent your test. You reply, you, and, and then you are going, you are going. That is when I, I am here with my friend. Then when he say, <laughs> one of the major things I saw the problem, it, it has come to, when they were talking, talking, and the lady shifted a call to video, and the guy got upset. Ah, if we sell you are where you are, why can't you pick the video call? You see, <coughs> trouble come. Trouble. So you see, whether a, a, a man or a lady, some eight video calls. Yeah. If you do them, you come across video calls with them, that will be the strain of the relationship. Then it means the person has issues. He has issues. In communicating rightly is intended purposes. So when you tune into video, you know that what he's telling you is not the truth. So communication, a lady reverend, for me, for me, it is you saying exactly like you, 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 you If it is said to you, will you like it? Why will you say, a woman? are you the man you like to control the woman? Why would you want to control a woman? If a man wants to control a woman, why can't a, a woman control a man? That is why I said that in the line of vows, we say she owns and command your love. So I tell the man that this woman is a commander in chief. <laughs> I mean, whether you like it or not, sincerely, those of us who are married listening to me, okay, if you allow your wives to take charge, I mean, they are able to manage one. I don't know about you, but they manage very, very well. So you give them this, you give them. You, you tell them exactly, and they manage very well. So, I don't know. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, thank you. Give it for me. Yeah. What you're saying is true. I always tell men, if you, if you know how to manage your wife, she'll be working and you'll be controlling the paycheck. Even from the palm of your hand. And um, it's so easy to do that if you just know how to manage your wife. Okay, let me ask another question in line to what we're talking about. Um, I was going to ask about 
keeping the language clear and specific. Mm. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't want this, or I don't like this. By natural fact, they want it. Mm. But that's what they're looking for. How do we rectify that so that we can communicate what we want? Somebody will say, I don't like kisses. And yet they find somebody else kissing their spouses and they say, oh, you never kiss me. But you said you don't want this. So how do we learn to be honest with ourselves? You know, some people try to play the hard to get stuff. Mm. So they, they, they come from an angle, me, you don't get me cheap. So it's always like trying to fight and every blade of their love, you have to fight for it. And that is where they feel okay. It's, it's a, a very terrible thing of love. Yeah. Uh, me, saying, at, he likes kisses, so, I mean, I don't like, he wants it to force more. And then the one who says, when I say, you I don't like it. You never uh, right. uh, get persistent. If you are gotten persistent, you know that I'm just joking. Are, are you getting me? Yeah. At any time they want it to play the hard to get. But that one doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody. Let us be so, you see, there are times you try to play a little plant here and there. It's part of, it's part of the fun. But it shouldn't be like uh, structural things, something like, oh, me, I don't like uh, uh, people holding me. Then when you appreciate somebody holding another person, and you make comparison that these people, anytime they are holding themselves and you don't hold me, why? Do you feel shy of me in public? Why? Don't you want people to know I am your uh, better pe pe person or what? Do you get? But you said that when we are in the midst of people, even when I try to do you, 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 you pull you me too. Then you are now asking me to do that. Why, what is it that you don't want to talk about? So like I say, yes, there's supposed to be a little bit, what we call it, um, trying to shift you a little bit. But the issue is that you should be clear and say that I like this, I don't like that. If the person forgets himself, so oh, remember that, that, that in a nice way. Remember, I told you I don't like this sort of ice cream. I like this one. Maybe you've forgotten yourself. Okay, you see, it has a way to say it, mm. but that hard to get is what destroys plain language. Okay, Bishop, can we say a little bit about taking care of ourselves too? Mm. in a relationship mm. because sometimes you find people trying so hard to, to, satisfy. Them, to satisfy the other person and in the process they lose themselves mm. so by the time they realize they don't know who they are anymore mm. how does that affect the relationship it does it does because you always you always have to relate with who you are. Who am I? Mm. Who I am is what I bring to the table of love. I cannot be another person. If you are another person, then you might have given the person wrong impression. That is why I say, oh, I had wrong impression about you. Because uh, our first impression at times could be okay, could be not to be okay. Okay, so you allow somebody not to be a self and to live in your shadow, for me, it's a sin. That is number one. Number two, the person's fear, fear of tomorrow, fear of their unknown. If I don't do that, I will lose. If he has, he will lose what he has. 
So even if the thing is not right, it's, it's not sound in the mind of right thinking people, for the loss of what he thinks, he will go. And I say, no, you don't lose yourself in getting what you want to get. If I were to speak to only gun people, I would use a gun phrase. But they say, when you go killing a certain type of animal, you don't exchange your life with the animal. So whilst you are in relationship, you should have your unique personality. That is the personality that attracted the person in the first place. So how do you lose it in the union? Are you using it to create a better you? But if you lose it to create that sort of uh, 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 an inferior person or a, a, a demotivated personality, then you've lost your uniqueness. So mm. in relationship, you always have to look at who am I? What are my strengths? I always say that God so loved the world, he gave his son. So anytime you love somebody, you should okay. be ready to give the person out. And when you give, you gain. When you give, you gain. And this ties us to giving the space. When you give the person to the community, you gain so much. So it is not about trying to satisfy and satisfy and satisfy the person. When it becomes selfish and not love, because you are just dying for the person. The person doesn't see you and no, no, it's, it's a one-way traffic. Love doesn't work out that way. Love is mutual. I come, you come. I shift from my position, you shift from your position. Let's see what we can do and how we can do it. And that is love. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Can I please ask, um, I got a message that some, you can hear us properly. Um, we are also on YouTube. So if you can hear us on the Zoom, you can please switch to the um, YouTube and I'm very sure you can hear us better on the YouTube if you can hear us from here. Bishop, I have a question. Someone is asking, I'm in a relationship with a, a gentleman <laughs> and he makes no time at all for me. Mm -hmm. If I ask about it, he says that we're soon going to be married and we'll spend all the time together. So we don't need to spend so much time now. What do I do? It is a big red flag, if I would put it that way. He hasn't got time for you now. He won't get time for you in the marriage. Because the marriage, rather, will have a lot of things that will take oh. away. OK, you'll be busy trying to put family together. Maybe as you marry, children will come in. And this is the time that the person will have to invest in your life the more. And these are some mm. of the things um, I started from the beginning. It's not a matter of emotion. Emotions are good, but use your senses. Use, it mm. is written for when you get in there, you will not have time for you. That I'll put it blunt like that. Because you cannot reap what you have not sown. Mm. So when is he going to reap giving you time when he has not sown giving you time? He has not sown yeah. it. Yeah. So it's a red flag. There might be other good things about him. So you have to weigh between this one and the other good things. The other things. Yeah. Then you also look at you, how this one affects you. Okay. Maybe this one affects you lesser than the other good things. Other good things outweigh this one. So will you be able to manage it when you are in the marriage and he says he hasn't got time? If you can't manage it, then don't enter. Thank you, Bishop. And another one is um, dependability. It says, um, I'm in a relationship with uh, a lady and I cannot depend on her to help me in any way. Is it a sign that I would not have her support when I marry her? Mm -hmm. You see, dependability is like getting committed. When all is said and done, when all is said and done, all the fantasies of the relationship had come, you need to learn how to get committed to one another 
and depend on one another. You see, one will put a thousand to flight, two will put 10,000. It means there's a concerted effort. It means there's a coordination between two people. It means there's a cooperation between two people. So mm. how come somebody is not cooperating? Is not, and all these uh, words feed into depending on the person. Okay, mm. is the person there when, I, when I'm going back? Can I fall on the person? The person? Yes. Yeah. So these are the things. And like I, I did say in the district, you know, you can't use one thing to disqualify a relationship. But is that one particular thing so important in the relationship that you cannot stand if it is not there? If you cannot stand, then you don't say that when I enter into the marriage, I can manage it. Learn to manage it now. To manage it now. Look, this person is not dependable. But he may or she may be dependent in some areas. So you weigh the areas. Okay, she's not dependable when we are talking about money. She's dependable when we are talking about the family. Do you get me? You can know the areas where she's dependable, she's not no, dependable. It could be that the person will not be dependable in everything. Oh. There will be some areas she will be dependable. So I'm saying that try to weigh mm. which one. There are areas which are deep cracking issues. I'm solving the problem, and the problem is that the young man told the lady lies from the beginning. Lies. They got married on the basis of lies. Lies. That the legal officer. And so when he writes his name, he writes Esquire at the end. Not knowing he's just a court clerk. He was able to get a beautiful lady to marry. These are the things. Lies from the beginning. Pretended from the beginning. So these things would be that that is what will affect dependability. That can I depend on this man as we are in the marriage now? Where is the way forward? Because he has told you lies from the beginning. Are you now, now that you've realized, are you going to take your life back to him and let him mess you up? And depend on him again. No, this time, even if you are in a relationship, you will know how to pick your steps so that he will not be able to uh, let you suffer again. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. I will encourage you to share the link. Let somebody else come in and learn of these nuggets that would help us in our relationship. We don't know it all, but we have somebody who is. Um, skilled in this area to teach us and to help us. Invite somebody and let them come in and help us or listen to this uh, nugget that would help us. There's a question, Bishop. It says, if one person is in the relationship, it's making more compromise than the other. How can you deal with this issue? Um, it is a problem, yes. But is it something that the person is intentionally doing it? At times, the person doesn't know that you have to let go. Okay. Yeah. So when it happens that way, and it's not like intentionally, some of these meetings help. Then personal counseling also helps where you try to talk to somebody for the person to talk to both of you and mm. see how the whole thing is going. You see, maybe it's a defect in the life of the person. And so, but that defect can easily be corrected. Ignorance, they say it's no excuse. But when information comes to the person and still the person is not learning, then it's a challenge, you see? Because some people will grow up, somebody will grow up in a situation it's like survival by the fittest. You don't have to say, I can't do it. You can't play a weekly. So all the time is learn to fight and win. No lose. So in getting to a situation like this, no matter how the whole thing is appealing and nice, the person thinks he can not lose that fight. So it will not even come into compromise. So it's a defect. 
It's a defect of relationship. He's learned something which is not building him up, but in his right thinking, he thinks that is that is okay. And one of the major things we did not talk about is teachability. Teachability. Whether the person is ready to learn and relearn, because we all have to learn and relearn every stage of our lives. Learn and relearn. If there are people who are of my age listening, I mean, you will see that you and your wife now, you have to learn and relearn. Okay, wife and husband, you have to learn and relearn. You can't take that same old stuff, 30 something years into the, or 20 something. You have to learn new things and yeah. see how to hold yours. And so these are the areas, if the person hasn't got teachability spirit, the person cannot learn how to compromise even, and it will be a great headache in the relationship. Thank you, Bishop. Another question came in. Um, what are five tips you would give to someone to help sustain, man, um, sustain a relationship? What are five tips you would give to someone to sustain a relationship? Yeah, I said something when I was talking uh, how to bring back the relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke various things one should do. One, understand who you are. You are, you are with, mm. understand the person. Get to know who the person is. At times, one of the major things we don't look at is the tribal differences. The tribal differences. It has a bearing on each relationship because it's culture and the way people do their things. So consider it. Number two, consider your communication skills. That is principal. Consider communication skill. What do I say? What do I not say? When do I say it? When do I not say it? Okay. What do I do so that the person understands my movement, my gestures, my symbols? Okay. My behaviors. A behavior is communication. So yeah. how does the person understand my behavior? Okay. Number three, how do I express love and how does she express love? I might fall short of my expression of love in the sense that I might not be able to understand the person's love language. So now mm. I ask, what is it I be very observant to know the person's love language? Like I did say, giving little, little gifts, not too valuable. What is it? I must always learn to know how to get the person's love language. Then there is an issue of fighting fair. And that is where compromising and all these things come. In. Because as long as you are human, there will be disagreements. Yeah. And so in disagreements, how do you get your score? Fight fair and get your score. Okay, so because if people are fighting, they score them, isn't it? So fight yeah. fair, fight by the rules, and don't fight on the orthodox way. Fight by the rules, know what to do. Let me put it bluntly in this way. Uh, maybe you are uh, not happy in the home. Why should you stop maybe taking food at home? Why would you want to? They, they, they have, you haven't noticed your wife had put poison? Why would you want to? Why would you want to go and lock yourself in the next next room? Can't you lie by yourself? And is that not? There are things we do. We are not yeah. fighting. We are not yeah. fighting. So let's fight fair. Then number five. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Wisdom is ability to interpret knowledge, and Bible says that. We should live with the woman according, according to knowledge. So ask God, how? 
can I draw from this world? How can I get all the resources that I need to make a successful So this fight for me, a principle. You know, Solomon was asked, what do you want? You know, uh, wisdom is money. Wisdom is money. And Solomon never asked for money. Yeah. Solomon asked for wisdom. And out of wisdom, he got money. money and other things. So these are five key things. Thank you, Bishop. Um, I have a question here. It's quite long, but I'll try and read it. It says, what can a lady do if there, there starts to be issues between her and her partner because she, she begins to feel that he's looking down on her as a person? And the partner is gradually changing his attitude towards her in some areas. And she starts to consider to end the relationship. But because she loves him and remembers all that they have been through, she doesn't want to give up yet, but she doesn't know what to do. You know, this is one of the areas I said, the person has distorted view about him or herself. Hmm. It is not your problem. It is not the other person's problem. So if you know you love such a person, the problem is with the person. In this hmm. case, we are talking about a lady. A lady. Yes. The problem is with the lady. Okay. What mm. will cause such a situation? Love covers multitude of sin. He's doing it to this. Whilst he's having this sort of negative um, feed in, you are having a positive outlook or positive um, um, output in the person's life. You should understand that this person is not because of you. It's because of her own understanding, her own upbringing, her own worldview. Because there are people, no matter what you do, when you, the first thing that comes into their mind is a pessimistic view. Mm. Oh, I'm going to travel on the train. What about if there are train crashes. crashes. <laughs> you, you want to change their view, but that is their mindset. Okay, pray and ask God to help you under such a people. She might be nice, but her worldview is distorted. And so she looks at you in the telescope of his worldview. When I'm looking at you, like I'm wearing my sunglasses, mm -hmm. whatever image the glasses is giving me, yeah. that is Sometimes I wear it and I'm driving and it's black and I remove it. I see clear. Sometimes, too. so it depends. Meanwhile, some people wear the glasses, they can drive with this. Somebody wear glasses, he can't drive. So it depends on your viewpoint, world viewpoint. And mm -hmm. the lady have challenges. Some might be psychological. Some might be psychological. So either you are patient to go through and express love until she gets delivered from that distorted worldview. Thank you, Bishop, thank you. Let me ask another question. In a relationship, we're supposed to tolerate each other. Yeah. How do we manage the weaknesses in tolerating each other? Yeah. I have always used this as in, in talking about to, to, to relating. Give yourself benefit of doubt. Mm. But don't take yourself for granted. For granted. Okay. Oh, why has he done this? You get the answer. It might be right. It might be wrong. But don't think you will be at the benevolence of your partner always to overlook your wrong. That is also very, very wrong. Oh, when I do it, you will forget. Uh, that is not. It, 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 it tries to pinch the person against his tolerable limits. There's limit to everybody's tolerable 
situation. There is where you get to, and they use a, a, an English word, you are pushed to the wall. To the wall. Yes. So don't take yourself for granted that, oh, when I did it last time, it, it related, it forgave me, I'm going to do it again. The same thing, no, no. You have to do an adjustment. If they are different things, fine. Okay, maybe I made a mistake on A and I made this time, I'm making a mistake on C. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. But you make a mistake on A, I corrected it. You make a mistake again on A, I corrected it. Abba. I mean, that is where people lose their Tory level limits. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that don't take yourself for granted. Be mindful that this relationship already is set against the wind. Get to know anybody who is in a relationship is not something the devil likes. When the devil frees you, then he's freeing you for failure. He knows that he's finished you. But once you are a winner, once you are victorious, he will always fight you. So the mere fact that you are, well, is somebody who doesn't agree. Once you agree to move together in a relationship, already he has set his eyes on you and is watching to put things on your way to make you fail. So yeah. don't be storylines. Storylines, storylines. Storylines means that you are wrong, but I'm okay. But how many times should you allow the person to be wrong? And that will go to forgiving. Then people will use 70 times 7 and impossible. No, but at least it should be one, let it be a. Next time, not let it be. Let it be B, let it be C, let it be D. Let it, I'm okay with it. But not the same A every time, the same one thing. No, I don't think it helps for us. Okay. Thank you, Bishop. Um, I want us to look at a little bit into a relationship where there's already um, issues. Or mm -hmm. I mean, in, in terms of the one person has a child already or both parties have, a ch they have children already and they're coming together. What are some of the things that you can advise that would help in a situation like that? Because they are already <laughs> children in the relationship before they came together. Yeah. You see, uh, most people at the early stages of such relationship think the children are not issues. That is, and it is a wrong thing. The children should be part of the discussion mm. before you enter. But let's say all this, I'm saying it because some people might be entering like that. And some people too, in their marriage, they meet it. Somebody will marry somebody who already has a child in the marriage, uh, in a relationship. A relationship. Really. Then marrying fresh, perfect. But I'm saying, let the child or children be part of the discussion. How are they going to be part of the discussion? Bring them on table. How are you going to handle them? Mm. I will give an example. A young man was going to marry and the lady has a child and he didn't want to know. And he sets up the lady for business and before he could realize the money is gone, then he's so upset with himself. So when they met me, I asked him, have you considered the child of your wife? He said, no, but the child has a father. I said, that is where you are making a mistake. Mm -hmm. The child has a father, yes, but speak the lady as your wife. If the father were to be good in the life of the child. Will you come to meet the lady as a wife? They know. Like the lady would have been married to the father of the child. But because there were challenges and God has brought you along the path of the person. So it means you are supposed to be a solution to the problem. You don't create a problem when you are supposed to be a solution. And the guy sat down. I said, so what do I do? I said, yes. You have to be mindful to know because the area of siphoning or drainage 
is when you give the money, if she uses the money to take care of the child. The and child. because to know, she's not telling you. She doesn't bring it as discussion. And he sat down and check up and look at me and think. I said, yes, you have to know. And don't play the ostrich. So mm. more than not, people mm. feel they brush it away. The children won't be a problem. But there are children who are not satisfied that their mother is going to another marriage. Mm. Or their father is going to another marriage. So they will cause the problem down there. Okay. Yeah. Especially if the man has a child, the woman has a child. There will be always a sort of friction that will come. Let me give another example. This was a man who lost a wife and they've lived a closed family and a lady was introduced uh, to the man for marriage. <clears throat> Brilliant. The lady had She's a single parent, had one daughter. The man had four children. The children welcomed the woman all right. So the woman moved in with her daughter to live with this man's children. The, the lady's daughter will be playing with the other people. When she hears the horn of her mother's car, then she will separate herself and make herself like They've treated her badly throughout the day. What does it mean? She doesn't want to share a mother with the others. And the mother did not pick it. But the mother too will come and think the people are doing the daughter. Hello, daughter. They're not doing anything. So the whole thing now affected the marriage. And the daughter got married and left, and yet the mother had to follow. But the mother felt they hated the daughter, but there is absolutely no problem. Because the lady feel she can't share a mother with any other person. She's lived with it for a long time for a marriage. So some of these things, the children will play it around. Play it around. So that's why I say you have to use wisdom a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the key to wisdom mm. to interact the information that you come across. What do we do? And you told her, look, this is us. Okay. Me and my wife, once in a while, we we'll tell the children, when we saw ourselves, you were not there. So <laughs> we are not going to allow you to come destroy us. When we are told, hey, please, I'm talking with my husband, I'm talking, so you stay off. You are just flowers. But some people are too picky. Okay. Yeah. If your children are telling you something, watch out. Set Amen. traps. See whether what they are saying is true. It's true. Don't just judge the emotional discussions that they will have with you. There are some people, children who are terrible, terrible. They, they, they will destroy things, and yet they will be pointing at others. At All others. because they wanted a solution. the people either ejected or sack, or done this, done that. Are you getting me? So they yeah. always set a certain stage for you. So these things is a dangerous area. Mm. And most people gross over it. Oh, oh, the children will handle it. Because those people, when I was talking to them, so I picked the daughter, and the daughter is cool. I said, so when they start, problems start coming, I say, remember, I asked you to look at this thing very carefully. This somebody who had given birth the baby, I mean, there, there's have not been any man in the life of the girl. Then he, the mother gets married, and this was a challenge. At the end of the day, the woman started building separately and left the man's uh, house where they, they all live together and once in a while come and visit. So it means that she still wants to live a single life. Right. And that is also something we should watch. People still want to live singlehood and want to maintain it and they enjoy it. They only marry to satisfy the cameras because people who ask them, are you not married? So they are married. Yeah. Left to them, they are okay with their children. Messy. And in your part of the world where they now take what we call uh, child support 
this thing, other 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 support. Yeah. It means already it's like if you are not there, I like it. Your presence itself rather stop certain things I do get financially. So mm-hmm. me, you 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 have to come this way and not that way. And so that is it's a major problem. Thank you. I think we have another question. Maybe this will be our last question. It's another long one. When my relationship started, my partner and I were communicating a lot. We spoke every day, different times in the day. Now we don't speak as much as we used to, and there is always an excuse why. Sometimes when I call, there is no response, and the call doesn't, isn't returned. Should I continue to let my partner know how I feel? to see if there is a change or should I end a relationship? Hmm. It's, a, it's a tough one. The other person, the, the, the way he put the question means that the other person doesn't even know how he or she feels like. Now, no, he says, he says when he speaks about it, there's always an explanation why. Yes, but the should she go ahead and explain how she's feeling or move away? That's the last part, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm saying that there, sh- there, there can be an excuse that is why the person is not communicating the way it's communicating. And remember, when we started, I said, if you send messages, it should be returned. Okay. Yeah. If in the morning you send a message and the person cannot even use auto reply to say, oh, I'll call you back. I can't speak now. Mm. I'll, you get me? Mm. It means you, the, you saw that the person is calling you and you can't, so I'll call you back. Then immediately within the next space, you call, then, oh, this is the reason why I'm keeping. If the person feels all this and still doesn't understand why you should get in touch, I have a problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can What was making the person initially to communicate? There should be a magnetic force. Mm. It was attracted either the initial attraction is no more. Either, excuse me to say sex, either, you see, so when the people get their satisfaction, then they begin to withdraw. So it's not like he's failing to communicate. He's got his satisfaction now. So it's not yearning. It's not yearning for the relationship. We communicate, we talk, we do things, but we yearn for the person. If we are not seeing the person, we miss the person. So if the person is not communicating as often as he could do, it means that he's not missing you. And if he's not missing you, you can even marry the person and you are still not missed in the home. Mm. So it, I would advise that he goes to let the guy know how or the lady know how he or she is feeling. Yeah. This is the way you ignore me. Ignoring somebody is difficult. I, I, I mean, human being, and you know him like, or her as if he or she doesn't exist. And you think it's normal. It's a problem. It's a problem. So I think she should let the young man know or whoever lady know that, look, this is the way I feel when I, I get to you and you don't get back to me. This is the way I feel you are. It pushes me away from you, but I try to hold myself. Okay, then all this, you are left in your decision taking. And when it, it, it seems right, you take the decision, whether positive or negative. And you should be in control of yourself, be yourself and take decision. Before we wrap up all this, you see the challenge, Lady Reverend, is because the women feel age is not on their side. So most of them, yeah. it gives them pressure, pressure in yeah. relationship. Yeah. At the same age, I need to marry. 
And yet, this is a man who is not making up his mind. This is a man who is not, I mean, picking the steps one after the other for me to even see my way clear. We used to talk. We used to talk maybe three, four hours or maybe three, four times. Now, even one, I say you don't have time. So how were you getting the time before? It means the person either has lost interest and is not coming out and is using those things to let you walk away yourself. So if anything, it's not like I said, I I'm, yes. So it's like you moved away. Anytime he meets his friend, go and ask her. She moved away. I didn't do anything. True. But he has done so many things mm. which are unspoken to let you know that, look, I am not interested. So the woman should get back. The man should get back. When I call, I don't receive. What is it? Let me know. You see, I eventually will tell you I've lost interest. But I'm very difficult to tell you or this or that or that. Or maybe perhaps I move on and tell you to please move on. And, and, and so that is, that's the way it goes. Thank you so much, Bishop. We're so, so grateful for today, for this nuggets. I think it's, it's very important. And most of the things you spoke about, it's for both those in relationship and those who are married. And I believe that if we can learn to apply these things, relationships are not easy. We have to understand that relationships are not easy. The woman is brought up from a different home. The man is brought up from a different home. You're coming together to become one. It's not going to be the same because you have different ideas, different understanding and different things. So take on board what Bishop is saying, apply them to your relationships and let's see where God takes us from, from here. But I would ask Bishop to pray for us because we know, and as he was talking, he said it, that some relationships, some issues in relationships can be generational cases, can be spiritual. And so we're asking Bishop to pray for us. Any relationship that is going through any challenge that is spiritual, since he's a man of God, a bishop, we're asking that he would pray for us and break those yokes off our backs so that our relationships can thrive and be better. Thank you, Bishop. Please pray for us. Father, in Jesus' name, the pharaohs of our life who will not allow us mm. to go mm. and say, oh, Father, may they be swallowed in the Red Sea. Amen. In the name. Amen. Those arrows. Mm. And mm. That's setting confusion mm. in our relationship. Father, we return the arrows back to send us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, if there be any assigned demon mm. from my father's side that seeks to destroy the mm. joy that we have found, Lord, we come against them. In Jesus the name. Name. You said our lines will fall in pleasant places. You Amen. said in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your yes. right are pleasures. In a relationship, Lord, mm. we are supposed to enjoy pleasures. So mm. anything that will stop your children from enjoying any pleasure of any sort, that will mm. bring them together. Lord, we come against it Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any negative eye, anything by way of touch, anything mm. by way of taste, Anything by way of food, mm. anything mm. that has hurt us, Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, anything Amen. that has brought us Amen. to this level of mm. misunderstanding, mm. Lord, come against it in the mm. name of Jesus. We Amen. say, May glory rise up over us again. Mm. May I never set in our relationship, Jesus. but there would always be a rising sun. In the morning, joy comes in the morning. Let us command our morning. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command the mornings of every mm. in the name of Jesus that Amen. the morning of your fortunes, 
that the morning shall bring your peace, that the Amen. morning shall bring good relationship, the morning Amen. shall bring your love. In the Amen. name, in the we name, lift of God, every, yes, every individual into your mm. prayer. Oh mm. God, your eyes is on the sparrow, and you mm. watch for us. Lord, mm. meet it once more again. In Amen. the name of Jesus, what Amen. I had gone wrong, Lord, you mm. are the Lord of of our lives. Therefore, mm. we ask it, let our lives send well again in Amen. the name of Jesus. In the book of Matipatute Karabate, in the of God, that is mm. magnificent, that is attracting things Jesus. of evil one. We ask against Jesus. it we in the name them. of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, mm. let us change. Mm. All that holds us down, let it be broken in Amen. the name of Amen. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed tonight. Let the believers say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are so, so grateful for tonight. Thank you. And thank you everyone that joined us tonight. We're so privileged. I see so many Reverend Ministers, Bishops online. Thank you so much for coming. And for those who will still want to share, there's a, a YouTube a link. If you go on YouTube, search for Reverend Sarah Sende. The um, episodes are there. You can go over it, send it to your friends and loved ones who are going through challenges. Let them listen to it. Somebody called me and said, just listen to one episode. And there was a problem, a challenge in their home. And by listening, he's found an answer to it. So please share it. Let somebody listen to it. We are here to help each other and to bless each other. Thank you so much for coming. So we come your way again next week, our oh, next month, sorry. Have a wonderful, wonderful month and God